Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Orson Welles. It is my pleasure to introduce our director, Mr. Greg Oppenheimer. Welcome once again to online radio theater. You know, now that we're all looking forward to traveling again, I got to thinking about a memorable flight companion I had on a trip I took in 2007. There was nobody in the seat next to me, and I was, thought I was very lucky, but the guy in the window seat, well, he, he was born in Barcelona. He's a voice double. He sounded exactly like Content Floss. Uh, he, he, uh, he, when he was a teenager, he moved to Boston, uh, the Chelsea section of Boston. He went to high school there. He, he moved to, uh, he went to uh, UCLA, class of 82, uh, minored in French. Uh, he, he, his junior year was in the Bordeaux section. Uh, he, uh, he is an accountant at the Nor uh, Cal State Northridge. Uh, he's going to New York to visit his friend, uh, <laughs> uh, who, who was a waiter at a very nice restaurant. Uh, and and they, they had hoped to see uh, Miss Saigon, but were disappointed that it's not playing anymore. You think. <laughs> He thinks Andrew Lloyd Webber is the greatest uh, composer ever, and uh, I don't know, I mean, the reason I'm telling you this is, is this is what he told me about himself before we pushed back from the gate. Have you ever sat next to somebody who has never in their life had an unexpressed thought? It was a very long flight. I, I wasn't planning on watching the movie, but I quickly put on the, the, the headphones. It didn't make a bit of difference. I mean, he, he, he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, Greg, 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 you know, and, and as he asked, he says, I'm going to take my jacket off now. I, I'm a little warm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but the worst thing was, he went to the bathroom at one point and I got up and, you know, and, and made way for him and he was there a long time and he finally, he came back. I got up again, he sat down. I'm watching the thing, trying to, you know, make like I'm concentrating on it. I didn't care about what I was watching at all. Uh, and he says, uh, Greg, yes, yes. And he says, uh, I had an accident, but it's okay now. <laughs> and right now, it's time for Burns and Allen in three, two, one. Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> With our special musical guest star, Eve Evans, yours truly, Toby Reed, Meredith Wilson and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and of course, Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Today, more Americans buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. Yes, Maxwell House, always good, to the last drop. It's tax season in the Burns household, and Gracie has gone to a movie matinee with her friend Blanche Morton so George can finish their income tax return. We join Gracie and Blanche on their way home from the neighborhood movie theater where they saw a picture starring their current dream man, Gregory Peck. Oh, what a marvelous experience, Blanche, those thrilling love scenes. Oh, yeah, it was a great picture. Luella Parsons gave it four stars, and Jimmy Fiddler gave it four bells. My rating is a little different. I gave Gregory Peck 15 quivers. Oh, when he makes love, my heart bobs up and down in my throat, keeping time with that wonderful Adam's apple of his. Oh, too bad our husbands didn't come along. They might have learned something. <laughs> what a letdown going home to them after Gregory Peck. You said it. It's like riding on the Super Chief and then switching to the Glendale bus. <laughs> oh, well, that's the way it goes. At first, when George and I went to parties, oh, he was terribly jealous. If another man even looked at me, he wanted to kill him. And now? <laughs> if another man grabs me and kisses me, George says... Boy, is he loaded. 
Speaking of kisses, Harry comes down to breakfast, gives me a fast one on the cheek, and then we both start complaining. Both of you? Yeah. Well, him because his toast is scorched, and me because I'm not. Well, I get the same kind of morning kiss. Believe me, the peck George gives me is no Gregory. Time sure makes a difference, huh? Oh, boy, the first few months of married life, they're all pepped up. And the rest of it, they're all pooped out. Well, here's my house, Blanche. I'd better go in and see if Hot Lips has fallen asleep of her income tax return. Good night, Blanche. Good night, Gracie. Well, now for the big romantic homecoming. Will he say, darling, you're back at last. Will he tell me how much he's missed me? Mm-mm, not him. He won't even know I've been out. Hello, George. Darling, you're back at last. Yeah, huh? Gee, how I've missed you, how I've, how I've needed you. Oh, George. I've longed for the touch of your hand. You have? Yeah, scratch my back, will you? There's uh, there's one spot there I can't get. Oh, George, wouldn't you like me to put my arms around you? Yeah, then you could scratch my back with both hands. Oh, I don't want to scratch your back. Oh, I wish Gregory Peck was here. I'd, uh, I'd just as soon have you scratch it. Oh, all right, I'll scratch your back. There. Uh, thanks. Now put your arms around me. Your back itches too, huh? Oh, George, forget it. All right, Gracie. Anyway, I've got to get back to this income tax return. Uh, now, let's see. Figuring our income on the basis of the community property law, uh, that would make... Uh, what law, George? The community property law. That's, that's the California law that says half of everything I've got is yours and half of everything you've got is mine. Then how come I only get one-fourth of the money we make? Well, that's the way it works out there. Uh, look, I'll show you. Here in my hand is a dollar in change. Yeah. Now, half of everything I've got is yours. So uh, so here's 50 cents. Oh, thank you. Now, half of everything you've got is, is mine. How much have you got? Uh, 50 cents. Half of it is mine. Hand it over. Uh, here. There. See how it works? I see who it works. Now let's try that again, and this time I'll start with the dollar. Okay. Now, half of everything I've got is yours. So, here's 50 cents. Thank you. And uh, half a, uh, how does the second part go? Uh, half of everything you've got is mine. How much you got? 50 cents. Half of it's mine, hand it over. Here. Thanks. <laughs> well, you were right, George. It comes out the same way no matter how you do it. Well, sure. I'll bet you get tired of me being so stupid, huh? Sometimes it comes in real handy. Now, now let me figure some of these income tax deductions. Oh, do actors have special deductions, George? Oh, sure. For example, the other day uh, you uh, you bought stamps to answer my fan mail. That's deductible. Mmm, that's three cents right there. Wait a minute, three cents? You told me that you spent thirty-two dollars and three cents. Explain that. Well, um, you know how on the way to the post office you pass Bullock's department store? Yeah. I didn't. Well, that reminds me. I was I was going through our receipts, and uh, I found this one from Bullock's I need you to explain to me. It says one boot for left foot, $10. Well, what do you need me to explain? Why did you buy it? It was a bargain. I got it for half what a pair would cost. But why did you buy one left boot? Well, I've only got one left foot. Well, when you're right, you're right. Now, uh, let's see what other uh, income tax deductions we can take. Oh, here's one, uh, business expense. What does that mean, George? Well, whenever we have a guest star on our program, we take him to dinner. That's, that's a business expense, and we can take it off a tax return. Now, let's see. Uh, we took Cary Grant to dinner. Oh, but he paid the check, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right, he did. Well, we took Bing Crosby out to dinner. Ah, uh, he paid the check, remember? Yeah, that's right. Well, last week we took Jack Benny to dinner. Oh, that's one for us. Yeah. <clears throat> now, let's see. Uh, now we come to dependence. Uh, total dependence and uh, partial dependence. 
Hmm. I wish I had some of our earlier tax returns handy. Gracie, what do I usually call your mother? Oh, surely you're not going to put that in writing. Oh, I don't mean that. Uh, does your mother live on just the money we send her? She does right now. You see, my brother got a job as a soda jerk, but he had to quit. Why? Well, a customer told him to squeeze a glass of orange juice. Well? And he squeezed the glass so hard it broke and cut his hand. He's some soda jerk. Matter of fact, you can, you can leave off the soda. Now, uh, let me finish this tax return here. Come in. Hi, Burnses. Hi, Bill. Hey, what are you doing, George? Trying to figure out my income tax. And I'm helping him. Some help. If it weren't for Gracie, I could figure my income tax out much easier. If it weren't for Gracie, you wouldn't have any to figure. Listen, Bill, you know, I used to do all right. When I first met Gracie, I worked alone. So she told me, George. Did you ever pay the loan back? You better run along, Milton Burl. I'm very busy. Listen, George, why don't you hire an income tax expert to do all that for you? Now, the guy I've got knows all the deductions an actor can take. I mean, he's wonderful. Really? Sure. Takes off your entertainment, your publicity, transportation. I, he even takes off your clothes. Oh, George can undress himself. And you know something else, George? If an actor hires a secretary to answer his fan mail, that's deductible. Why, I keep a secretary running all the time. You do, huh? One of these days, I'm going to catch her. In other words, you don't get enough fan mail to keep her busy. What? I get baskets of fan mail. And some of it comes with just my initials, W.H.G. William Horace Goodwin. No, women's heavenly gift. He's really a shy little boy. Yeah, well, he's got a point, George. I think Bill is one of the handsomest actors in Hollywood. Me? Sure, and I know someone who thinks you're even better than that. Me? That's the one. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Milton. I'll never get this tax return finished. It's, it's, it's so darn complicated. That does it. I give up. Gracie, take this income tax stuff down to the expert in the Taft building and, and let him figure it out. And then here's 50 bucks to pay him. I'm going to go get an aspirin for this headache. Well, $50 just to make out our income tax? That's ridiculous. I can buy one of those dollar tax books and do it myself. That'll save George $49. Think what he could buy with $49. Hat, gloves, shoes, coat. Why, he could buy me lots of things. I'll do it. <laughs> Dr. Miller, I just had to come by. I have some wonderful news for you. Oh, what is it, Gracie? You know those treatments you've been giving me where I lie on the couch and tell you all about myself? Psychoanalysis, yes. I've been tweaking your mind. Well, you've certainly helped me. How could I miss? Any change was bound to be an improvement. Oh, you'll be proud of me. I just did a brilliant thing. I figured out George's income tax. Well, you are cured. No more long hours on the couch. And guess how the income tax came out? The government owes George $30 million. I'll arrange the pillows on the couch. Oh, no, I'm not tired. Gracie, how did you arrive at that terrific figure? Oh, no starches and lots of exercise. No, I'm, I, I mean George's income tax figure. Oh, well, I bought a book on income tax and I found out all the deductions. But, Gracie, even with all kinds of deductions, how could you possibly arrive at $30 million? Oh, well, of course, the big item with entertainment. The book says if an actor entertains people in the course of his business, that's deductible at the rate of $2 per person. Well? Well, every time George goes on the radio, he entertains 20 million people. This is unbelievable. Well, now, that's $40 million right there. I know the government needs money, so I knocked off $10 million. Oh, that's awfully nice of you. Ah, live and let live. $30 million is plenty. Do you realize what this will mean to George, Doctor? I think I do, Gracie. 
Speaking as a psychiatrist, I would say that George will develop a pronounced isolation complex induced by extended incarceration and complicated by severe claustrophobia and prolonged inability to alter his environment. Ooh, what does that mean? It means they're going to throw him in the clink. The clink? They'll put him in Alcatraz. You falsified his tax form. Yeah, well, yes. Oh, oh, this is terrible. But, 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 but he's not to blame. I, I, let them send me away to, to wherever they send women. To Hatchaby. Gesundheit. Thank you. <laughs> this is George's return. Therefore, they'll hold George responsible. Well, how long will they keep George in Alcatraz? Well, that's hard to say, Gracie. I know a man who defrauded the government of only $20, and he was sent away for 20 years. Oh, 20 years? For $20? Mm. Oh, and in George's case, it's $30 million. Boy, will he be old when he gets out. Hey, Gracie, I came as soon as I got your call. What's the trouble? Oh, Bill, it's terrible. I falsified George's form. Oh, what's so bad about that? You've been patting his shoulders for years. Oh, no, no. It's his income tax form, and they're going to send him to Alcatraz. Oh. Think what Alcatraz will do to George. Think of him with his face all pale and his little shoulders stooped, shuffling along with that hopeless, dead expression. Yeah. And then think of him after a few years in Alcatraz. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look, maybe, maybe George can escape. Oh, I doubt it, Gracie. It's an island in the Pacific. On one side is an ocean full of sharks. Oh, what's on the other side? San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco. That's where my mother lives. Well, if George ever escapes, he'll know which way to swim. Yeah, I hope the sharks don't get him. Maybe it's not too late to save George. I'll appeal to the governor. Uh, oh, that won't do any good. Then I'll appeal to his wife, the governess. Gracie, nothing can save George from Alcatraz. Oh, dear. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll soften the blow for him. I'll make it sound attractive. Attractive? Well, sure. It'll be like a daytime radio serial. Alcatraz can be beautiful. Gracie, it's an island prison with, with bars. A big, ugly rock. Now, how can you say that's beautiful? Well, love will show me the way. When you're in love, you can imagine the ugliest thing in the world is beautiful. And I'm in love with George. Good luck, Gracie. George? Yes, dear. How would you like to live on an island? An island? Yes, in, in, in the Blue Pacific. Might be nice, uh, an island uh, with palm trees. Yeah. And then sandbars. Take away the sand and you've got it. Huh? Oh, it's a beautiful place. Uh, once you're there, you just can't leave. Holds you in its spell, huh? Uh, did you say spell or cell? Spell. Oh, sure. I love the ocean. Uh, it would be nice to lie there and listen to the, to the breakers pounding on the rocks. Yeah, making little ones out of big ones. Huh? Oh, you love this island, dear. The change will do you good. Now, for instance, don't, don't you get tired of, of people always calling you George? I never thought about it. Well, now on this island, they can call you something else. Like, like what? Like 7293. 7293? Yeah, and your closest friends can call you 7. 7G Burns, huh? Gracie, this island is beginning to sound a little wild. Besides, I like the modern conveniences. Does this island have electric lights, uh, electric uh, electric stoves, electric refrigerators? Oh, yeah. Even the chairs are wired. The chairs are wired? Where is this place? Hello, all. Oh, hello, Meredith. Gee, Gracie, Bill Baldwin just told me the terrible news. He said that George is going to the... No, Meredith. Don't say it in front of George. Very well. Uh, he said that George is going to the P-E-N. P-E-N? Because he defrauded the government on his income, T-A-X. I'm going to the pen because of my income tax? Darn it. 
He caught on despite my precautions. Gracie! Wouldn't you like to live on an island, dear? Stop that. How could I get into trouble with my income tax? It was, it was made out by an expert. Oh, thanks, but I don't deserve the compliment. You made it out? Mm-hmm. Holy smoke, they'll send me up for life. Cheer up, George. I know a chap who was sent to prison for a crime far more serious than yours, and he was only there for two weeks. Really? Yes. Then they hung him. Nice of you to cheer me up. Oh, not, not at all. Another cheering thought is that Gracie might enable you to escape by sending you a cake with a file in it. Oh, no, no, that wouldn't help much, Meredith. You see, George is going to Alcatraz, and it's surrounded by water. Oh, well, you might send him a somewhat larger cake with a canoe in it. Look, Meredith, will you please tell me... Come in. Is Mr. George Burns here? That's me. I'm from the Income Tax Department. Oh. Well, goodbye, Seven. Uh, listen, mister, I, I can explain everything. You see, my wife is... Now, there's nothing to explain, Mr. Burns. I just came over to thank you. Thank me? Sure. Imagine a big star like you taking the time and trouble to write a comedy tax return just to hand us fellas a laugh. Huh? <laughs> what a gag that was. Claiming a deduction for each person in your radio audience. Huh. Did you like that one? Oh, you're a real comedian, Mr. Burns. How do you think of that stuff? Oh, it's just a gift. Well, the fellas wanted me to bring over this box of cigars as a token of our appreciation. Thanks again, and goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I'll be darned. Hand over those cigars. Huh? I earned them, and I'll smoke them if it kills me. George and Gracie will return in just a moment. But first, here's the incomparable Eve Evans to sing Happy You Happened to Me. You touched my heart you touched my hand It was the moment my life began When we embraced so tenderly You said, I'm happy you happened to me Many years later, kids are all gone, and some sometimes we disagree. Certain things were meant to be, and I'm just happy. You happen to me. And certain things were meant to be. I'm just happy you happen. Happy you happen to me. Happy you happen to me. Thank you, Eve. That was lovely. Thank you, Mr. Reed. And now, once again, here are our stars. Gracie, you got a letter from your sister Bessie. Oh, Bessie. Oh, what does she say? What does she say? Why, she's just wonderful herself. Is she? Is she? Oh, yes, but her son, Willie. Willie, Willie, that's the one with the, uh, with the high blood pressure? Yes. The one who sleeps on the floor to keep his blood pressure down. Yeah, that's him. Smart kid. 
Yes. Well, uh, yes. What what about Willie? Well, he broke his back. Broke his back? How did he do that? On account of he's left-handed. He he broke his back because he's left-handed? Yes. Well, you see, what happened was he had a donut in his right-hand pocket, and when he went to take it out with his left hand, he... He broke his back. Yeah. Well, you tell Bessie the next time to tell Willie that if he's got a donut in his right-hand pocket to try to take it out with his right hand. Yeah, but that's hard to do when you have your pants on backwards. He had his pants on backwards? Yes. Well, you see, what happened was he had a suit of clothes with two pairs of pants, and he put one pair on frontwards and one pair on backwards. So that he could go either way? That's when the truck hit him. The truck? What truck? The truck that didn't have its lights lit. Why, why didn't the truck have his lights lit? Because, um... Because hold it, hold it, hold it. Did the guy in the truck have his pants on backwards, or did Willie have his pants on backwards? <laughs> oh, George, you're trying to confuse me. I'm confusing you? Willie, Willie had his pants on backwards. Oh, but the fella in the truck, uh, wh why didn't he have his lights lit? We didn't have to, it was daytime. Oh... But then the fella in the truck, uh, uh, didn't he see Willie coming? He didn't know it was Willie. He saw two pairs of pants coming toward him, and he drove in between them. Say good night, Gracie. Good night. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show was written by Keith Fowler and Paul Hinning and starred Brad Zinn as George Burns and Allison Arngrim as Gracie Allen. Phil Proctor played Dr. Miller, and Ivan Curry was Bill Goodwin. Melinda Peterson played Blanche Morton. Stuffy Singer was Meredith Wilson. And Ed French was the tax man. Our special musical guest star was Eve Evans. Miss Evans' song, Happy You Happened to Me, was composed by Harry Allen, with lyrics written by Greg Oppenheimer who also produced and directed tonight's program. And this is David Osman for Spurdvac and Online Radio Theater, saying good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? <laughs> Want to try that one again? <laughs> sure. <laughs>